today we meet again to continue with our phonetics. And I want to remind, don't forget the S after phonetic, because if you take the S, it becomes an adjective. Phonetic transcription, phonetic analysis. Just like linguistics and linguistics. You don't say linguistic, it is linguistics. Uh, you don't say economic, economics, mathematics. Don't forget the S. So today we continue with our phonetics. And very briefly, if we want to revise what we have said, we define phonetics as, I said phone in the Greek word, it means sound. So phonetics is a study of sounds. And I spoke about the kind of English that we are going to talk about. And we called it RP. RP stands for received pronunciation. That is the accent of the elites, of educated people in Britain, or the BBC English, sometimes referred to as the Queen's English, or call it the King's English. It is not American English, not Australian English. It is the English language that is spoken in the south of Britain. Right, if you remember I said, as long as we are dealing with sounds, in English, there are 44, in RP, when I say English, I mean RP. In English, there are 44 sounds. I said 24 of those are consonants. And 20 are vowels. Now, on what grounds have we classified the sound ba as a consonant and the vowel a as a vowel. Remember I said the difference with them is a matter of obstruction. When you make a consonant like ba, ta, da, ha, you obstruct the air coming from the lungs. When you make a sound like a ah, or e, the air issues freely. You do not obstruct the air. This is the phonetic difference between a consonant and the vowel. Another phonological difference is a matter of distribution. Vowels have different distribution from consonants. Right, today we are going to start with the description of consonants. Remember, in English there are 24 consonants. But in the English language we have 26 letters to represent all the sounds. These 26 letters represent the 44 sounds. Out of these 26, we have four, five letter vowels. Remember, A, E, I, O, U. These are letter vowels. These letter vowels represent the 20 vowels in English. That is why a vowel may represent more than one sound. And I gave you the example of the letter A, it might be pronounced ah, like cat, hat, fat, F-A-T. It can be pronounced O oh, like war, W-A-R. It's the same letter, A. It can be pronounced eh, like many, any, many, any. So the letter represents four or five sounds. That's why we need phonetics for foreign learners. Because English spelling does not reflect the pronunciation of the word. Now, the same with consonants. In English, uh, there are 26 letters. If you take these five, then you are left with 21 consonants, letters, consonants. Three of these are completely useless. i show you how. For example, the letter C. The letter C is pronounced either ka or sa. And we have the letter K and the letter S in English. What is the point of having a letter C? Then the letter Q. Q is pronounced as K, W, or K, Y. Like Queen, Quick, or Q, to stand on the Q. And the letter X. The letter X is all pronounced K and S. Tax, mix, fix, box. So these three letters are useless. Why? Because we have alternative letters. And sometimes people want to know when the C is pronounced Sa, when it's pronounced Ka. Very briefly, the C is pronounced Sa if it is followed by a front vowel, like I or A, like city, like certain. It's pronounced Ka 
after center of road or back vowel, like cut, like cut. If it is followed by a consonant, I get pronounced ka, like clean, clean, climb. If it is followed by a consonant, it's pronounced ka. If it is followed by back vowel, it's pronounced ka, like cut, call, calm. If it's followed by front vowel, like e or e, e, it's pronounced ka, like city, certain, cement, and so on. So these three letters are redundant. We don't need them. Just to reiterate, we said that in English there are 44 sounds. 20 of these are consonants, are vowels, and 24 are consonants. These are vowels. But in English, we have got 26 letters. 26 letters. Five of those are vowels. A, E, I, O, U. So we are left with 21 consonants. Letters to represent the 44, uh, the 24 consonants. That's why in English, you find the sound sh, for example. Sometimes it is SH, like she, shy. Sometimes it is just an S, like sure. Sometimes it's double S, like issue, tissue, pressure. Sometimes it's just a T, like nation. The sound fa. Sometimes it's F, far, from. Sometimes it's PH, like physics. Sometimes it's GH, like enough, tough, rough. So there is no consistency between the sound and the letters. Remember I said also that three letters are useless, are redundant. We don't need them. These letters are the C, which is pronounced as Ka or Sa. And we have got the letter Ka and the letter Sa. And then the Q, it is pronounced as Ka Wa or Ka Ya. Like queen, Q, Q U U E U E. And the letter X, it is always pronounced K S. Like tax, fix, mix, box. So why do we need this? We don't need them. See, as long as we have these letters. Okay, now I'm going to go to the description of these consonants. <laughs> Remember, when I spoke about types of phonetics, I said there are different types. We have got acoustic phonetics, experimental phonetics, auditory phonetics, uh, forensic phonetics, and articulatory phonetics. All those, except articulatory phonetics, are sometimes referred to as lab phonetics. They need a lab. Why do we teach articulative phonetics here in Sudan. We don't have laboratories. And articulatory phonetics, each of us, any one of us, carries with him his own laboratory. We have our lab. If you have 40 students in a class, then you have 40 laboratories. And here are the laboratories. Yeah, at what we call organs of speech or articulators. Right, I said we do articulative phonetics because we have got our lab. We all have got tongues, we have got teeth, we have got lips, we have got alveola. That is why we do articulative phonetics. If you want to do acoustic phonetics, if you want to do experimental phonetics, you need some kind of different equipment, which is very expensive. And articulatory phonetics is not the easiest, of course. It is one of the most interesting and most difficult because we go into details how sounds are made, how sounds are articulated. That's why it's called articulatory phonetics. And these organs, as you see here, are better called articulators. Articulators. Here you have the tongue, and this is the most important articulator, the most important organ. We know why. Here are the lips. 
the lower lip and the upper lip. You know the, the lower lip is mobile, the upper lip is not as flexible as the lower lip. Behind the lips you have got the teeth. And the word tooth in Latin is called denta. So when we talk about dental sounds, sounds made with the teeth, the tongue and the teeth. Right, behind the teeth, immediately behind the teeth, you have got some kind of corrugated part that is called the alveolar ridge or the teeth ridge. Here where the teeth are planted, it is zigzag. The teeth are planted there. Behind the alveolar, uh, the alveolar is the Latin word, behind the teeth ridge, we have what we call the hard palate. If you use your tongue, you can feel it. Behind the hard palate, we have got the soft palate. Again, use your tongue, you will feel how soft it is. And uh, the soft palate has got a name in Latin, it's called vilam. At the end of the soft palate, you have that dangling part, laha, that is called the uvula. The uvula is very important. It has got two functions. Either it is raised or it is lowered. If it is raised, then it shuts the nasal cavity. The, all the air comes through the mouth. If it is lowered, then the air can go through both now mouth and nose. Right, now let me go to the description of sounds. I'm going to start from the outside, from the lips. The lips by themselves can make three sounds. The first sound is called bilabial. By labial. By the two lips. Now we are going to describe the cost according to three parameters. Where they are made, because the sound may be made in the lips, like pa. It might be made in the teeth, like fa. It might be made in the uvulum, or in the uvula, or the alveolar. And the second one, how it is made. How he refers to what? The manner. We call it manner. This is called place, we call it place. By manner we mean what we mean, what happens to the air? Do I stop the air completely like pa? I accumulate the air behind the lips. When I release the air, some kind of explosion or plosion happens. That's why I call this sound, sound stops. Stop, because I stop the air. Sometimes I bring the two organs sufficiently together. When the air comes out, it pushes its way through and they begin to make a kind of friction. I call the sound fricatives. Now, I'm going to give you the manner of the sound, and you are going to tell me the place. The first manner is called stops. Or plosives. Where plosion. I want to, want to, to see where they are made, and you tell me the place. Okay? Now, the stops are the pa, pa, the ba. Where are these made? Pa, ba. You see? Pa, ba. They are bilabial. So if the first place is bilabial. You have got eight places. The first place is here in the lips. Then the teeth, then the alveola, then the hard palate, then the soft palate, and then in the vocal, uh, yeah, in the vocal cord. So the pa and the pa are bilabials. The manner, we call them stops. Now, what about the ta and the da? Ta, da, ta, da, ta, da. It is the tongue. Against the T3, against the alveolar. So I call these stops, they are, uh, uh, these are bilabial, these are alveolar sounds. Again, I have the ka and the ga. Ka. King, ka, ka, ga, ka, and ga. This is according to the place by labial, alveolar, and velar sounds. This is called velar, these are called alveolar, 
لقد باي ليبل بلمانال ايه stops they are stops I have got six stops in English now the third parameter I said where they are made how they are made and then the state of the glottis state of the glottis what do we mean, uh, we mean by that are the vocal cords wide apart you know the vocal cords here in the larynx when I make a sound like uh, the vocal cords are wide apart like this when I make a that they begin to vibrate so is the sound makes vibration we call it voice sound voice the if there is no vibration we call it voiceless and we write it in this way the first sound is voiceless the second is voiced so the pa is voiceless the ta is voiceless the ka is voiceless the ba is voiced the da is voiced and the ga is voiced if, if i want to describe any consonant of these just look at the top tell me that the pa is the bilabial stop and it is voiceless okay describe the sound da look at the top it is alveolar it is stop and it is the second one so it is voiced if I ask you to describe the sound ga then you tell me that it is velar it is stop and it is voiced you have to give me three words describing the place the manner and state of the glottis whether the, the vocal cords are vibrating or not right now these are the stops you have got six I'm going to move to the second group and these are called fricatives and in fact this is the biggest group in English why fricatives we do not stop the air completely we bring two organs sufficiently together so when the air pushes its way through they begin to make a kind of friction the first sound is made right here in the teeth the lower lip and the teeth make the sound fa or the sound va fa 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 va so the fa is made with the lower lip and the teeth now then we have got the sound sa that is the symbol for the sound sa a stable arabic like this and the sound za, the symbol for it in english like that that is the za sa and za where are they made against the tongue against the, the teeth sa za between the teeth the tongue between the teeth sa and za sa and za then we have got the sound sa and za the sa and the za the tongue is in the alveolar in the alveolar so when you say sa and these are very good examples of vo the voice the voice of sound if you say sa sa put your hand on your head sa sa nothing you say za za you feel your head vibrating so the same with sa and za the sa is voiceless the za is voiced the sa is voiceless the va is voiced okay these are six we are left we see we have got nine fricatives fa va sa za sa and the then we have got the sha sheen sha and ja sha and ja so like she shy issue sure and ja like measure leisure treasure these are made in the hard palate so we call them palatal palatal you might find differences in some phonetic books so the sha and the ja by the way this sound never begins in english word the ja it comes always in the middle or at the end like measure treasure leisure leisure and now the last sound in the fricatives is the ha. This is made in the glottis here between the vocal cords. The ha, like here, 
him had. Okay? You have got nine fricatives. So now we have got six stops, nine fricatives, and the places are the following. Here the fa and vava are fa labio dental. I will call this LD, labio dental. Lip and teeth, labio dental. I said dent means tooth. Dentistry, a dentist. Dentistry. Right? The la and the, uh, the fa and the va are labio dental. The lip and the teeth. The fa and the are what? Dental or interdental. The tongue between the teeth. I just want to remind you that the lips make only five sounds. The lips. Pa, ba, and ma. Plus fa and va with the teeth. All the other sounds, whether they are consonants or vowels, are made by the tongue with other organs. That is why the tongue is the most important organ, the most important articulator. If you have got 44 sounds, the lips make five sounds, then 39 sounds are made with the tongue. That's why the whole language is called by the name of by the tongue, Arabi, the English tongue. The English language means the English language. When I say Lisan al Arabi, I mean the Arabic language. So I called it after the tongue because the majority of the sound, not the majority, in fact, in English, 39 sounds are made by the tongue. The lips only make five sounds. And the sixth is the wa. wa. Right? Now we have got fricatives, we have got stops. Let me go to the third manner of speech. That is the nasal sounds. Or nasals. Nasals, that means the air comes to the nose. Remember, I said when I talk about manner, what happens to the air? Here, the air comes to the nose. I stop the air somewhere. For example, when I stop the ma. Where is the ma made? In the lips. Ma. Mm. Although I stop the air here, but still the air comes to the nose. That's why I am able to make a ma. Ma. Mm. Again, the na. I put the tongue again in the alveolar. Mm. And these are called nasal sounds. The last sound, which we don't have in Arabic, is called ng. Like king. The last sound in the word king, or ring, or in the word finger, or in the word English. This sound, again, the back of the tongue, again, is the velum. This is the place is the velum, so the sound is vila sound. This is alveolar sound, and the ma is, as we said, is a bilabial sound. These are the three nasals in English. By the way, we have a misconception. Sometimes we think that we nasalize other sounds. We cannot. When you have something, when you have called, or adenoid, or lahmiya, or anything, or or call, and your nose is stuffed. You make the nasal sounds oral sounds. You don't make a ma. You make it oral. Right. Then let me go to the other class. Here we have got three. Then we have got what we call affricates. Affricate, remember double F. That's fricative. Fricative, one F. Affricate, double F. So African sounds in English there are two. Cha and ja. Cha and ja. We do, because we don't have this sound in Arabic, we find some difficulty in pronouncing it. Cha, cha, cha. Two sounds together. The ta and the sha. Here the da and the ja. And by the way, all English words that begin with the letter J are pronounced ja, ja. The D comes before the ja. Ja, ja, judge, jar, journey. Cha, like child, church, child, church. These two sounds, these are the, because they have two sounds, we call them Africans. And they are made where we call them palato alveolar. Palato, palato alveolar. Or alveopalatal, like Afro Asian. Afro Asian. Palato, yani in the palate and the alveolar. The ta is made in the alveolar. The da is made in the alveolar. The sha in the palate, the ja in the palate. So the sound is called palato alveolar or alveo palatal. Now, let me move to the other, we call them lateral sounds. 
دلاتة الساونز دلا أنظرة لا لا إذا ألفيرا إن فاس we have so many ر ر rubbish right away we have got taps we have got rolled عندي ثلاثة أربعة four five ر in English but I'm going to talk about one ر I call them lateral and then we have got the sounds we call approximants approximants that are approximately و and يا و and يا so we have got stops six fricket is nine nasal c africa is two and laterals two and proximates two so they are what 15 18 20 24 these are the 24 consonants so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to ask you to describe the sound for example what look up you will find it by label look to the left you will find it approximate and then whether it is voiced or voiceless let me end up this with saying one thing if a sound is single it is always voiced except the ha it is voiceless are single so they are voiced if the sound you have two of them pa and ba ta and da ka and ga the first one is voiceless the second one is voiced and now we come to the end of the description of our consonants again i'm going to describe vowels which is more difficult than consonants why because the consonant is made in a certain place if it is made in the lips i call it bilabial if it is made in the teeth i call it dental if it is made in the alveolar i call it alveolar but the vowel has no place where it is made right thank you very much and we'll see we meet again when we come to the description of vowels wassalamu alaikum